That's why I tell everybody 100 hours of education before you buy your first eBay. Meanwhile, the second, the second they get hot on it, they buy 16 things on eBay. You got your perspective. I just want to be happy. Don't you want to be happy? Just wanted to uh, talk a little sports cards. So that's what we're going to do. So if you've got any questions, you know, I know a lot of people are 101. I know a lot of people are 201. I know a lot of people are 301. Just to set up the framework. Um, but leave comments on the side here. Um, just go to everyone. Um, please say hello. Say what's up. And then if you've got questions, please put, please put them right into the chat. Uh, I'm glad all of you are here. Um, and so basically before we go into it, just kind of like where I'm at, like pretty much besides the way I felt about social media in 2004 or the way I felt about the internet itself in 1995, three years ago, I, I got that same kind of feeling in my stomach, that buzz, kind of similar to like even within social media, like I felt about Snapchat or I felt about TikTok or when I look at athletes or um, just thinking back to like, uh, what just happened here? Somebody shared something. What's happening in the screen, guys? Because I lost everybody. One, now one second. Let me see. I don't know why. Somebody was able to share that because I, I like seeing yeah. the faces. Yeah, I wouldn't buy that Joe Burrow card because the grading company is bad on that. Somebody hit something probably. Yeah, I'm trying to fix. figure out. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, because I like having everybody's faces. Um, anyway, um, just really excited about the space. Think that there's a lot of macro trends that led to this. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, I think it's a huge opportunity. Now, at the same token, the reason I wanted to do something like this is there's a lot of ways to lose money. For example, that card that everybody just saw, if that was somebody's card, it means that somebody just got into the game, bought a Joe Burrow card, but bought it from a grading company that is like, I don't even, like, I've spent zero time looking at the Bobo, as I would call them, trading companies, but like, I've seen the PGI before. I haven't done the homework on when it was. You know, like, there was a whole era of grading that happened right after I got out of the game in the mid-90s. And I've done my homework on kind of like the three that I most care about, which is PSA, SGC, and BGS, Beckett. But I, just so everybody knows, again, I put in six months of homework before I put out my first post of like, there's something going on here. And that was three, three years ago. So it, it takes a ton of education. There's an ungodly amount of mistakes that I see my friends making who I've talked to for an hour by buying a qualifier PSA. That means something they think is rated an eight, but the way the PSA company used to do it, it's actually a five. Cause you know, there's just, there's a billion things. There's a million different companies. This is a very deeply education needed based thing. On the flip side, I haven't seen anything like this from a happiness standpoint in a long time. Like my most cynical, like, like whether wealth, I, you know, I think a lot of you know my background. I have a lot of very well off friends and I have a lot of friends that are very much not well off. And it's been very fascinating to watch the human dynamics of people that have gone into this game. I think that we are in a moment. I do think it's like any market. I think there's a lot of things today that the prices that they are now in five years are gonna be way, way, way less because people like to speculate on up and coming rookies and, and just taking high risk. On the flip side, I think there's some substantially very smart investments that are more interesting to me than a real estate or a stock, sound stock if you go into very classic, kind of very protected places. So. Lou, you're looking at the uh, comments section. Maybe while I look at all the faces and kind yep. of try to get a vibe, maybe you can pick the question that Dustin will turn on, or maybe you can even activate the question since you have more knowledge. And Dustin, you can too. You're getting more knowledgeable by a second, but I'm ready to kind of do questions. The setup is very simple. This is something that I did from 1986 to 1994 I loved. I kind of watched it every day since didn't see anything really meaningful from a business standpoint. It was fun. I would always buy a little here, a little there, but about three years ago, three and a half years ago, it became obvious to me what has happened now, which is why I started making content back then. Um, I'm flattered, I guess is the way I would say it, that people think like I've, I drove it. I'm always flattered by that because I'm like, 
I mean, do people realize how big this market is and how small my audience is in the scheme of things? But it's been really interesting. There's a lot going on. There's gonna be a lot of happiness had. There's gonna be a lot of money to be made. There's gonna be a lot of money that's gonna be lost because people are gonna make mistakes in jumping to conclusions and lack of education. I think the two biggest trends that everybody should pay attention to are on the edges. One is what I would call the contemporary art market. I think that if you studied what happened from the 1950s to today with Andy Warhols and Jackson Pollocks and things of that nature, there's a scenario where, um, by the way, I'm getting bombarded with people trying to get in. This only holds 500. So if you're just coming because you want to say what's up or what have you, great. But if, after a while, if you're, you're not interested, don't just leave and leave this on. Leave the chat so some people can get in that are trying to get in. But I'm pumped that all of you are here. Contemporary art. I, I do think, you know, hollow first edition Shadowless Charizard PSA 10s that there's only 130, 40 of even though they're hundred K today could get crazy. I think PSA 10, Michael Jordan, you know, rookie cards that are 80, 90,000 today, since there's 313 of them could get crazy if this happens the way I think. When I mean crazy, I mean things going from a hundred thousand to a million a piece, the way that Jackson Pollock's and Andy Warhol's did. So on the super high end, the contemporary art thing, on the, on the low end, something I see nobody talking about is we talk about pack breaking and all the stuff that, if you don't know what that is, on YouTube, people opening up packs, pack breaking. And we talk about it for what it means for the current hobby. But I don't think people realize how many seven, eight, and nine-year-olds are watching the living shit out of those videos, but they're not in the game yet. They're seven or eight years away from being in this game, kind of. And so it's an incredible, incredible, uh, what I would say, pipe to giving you a debate that the hobby can have much longer legs than it being just a 12 month or 24 month kind of thing. Or at least the hobby is 120 years old. I'm talking about like these spikes that we saw in the mid eighties, late eighties, excuse me, early nineties, the one that we're living through right now, the one we saw in the early seventies, early eighties, and the ones that we saw kind of in the fifties and sixties, these have had cycles. But if you do real economic homework, and look how the card market has outperformed the S&P 500 on the top 5% premium stuff. Historically, baseball, Mickey Mantle, Stan Musial, Roberto Clemente. I think that's getting spread out now into Pokemon, soccer, basketball. That's why I've spoken about 95% vintage. You know, the things I've talked about have been basically 95% vintage and, or 90% vintage and five to seven young players that I think have already proven enough on the field. I'm not talking about a good highlight by Bol Bol during a scrimmage. I'm talking two, three years of performing that get me excited of like, okay, maybe there's something here. Outside of Luca, which you might remember two years ago or 18 months ago, I got really excited about because I just saw enough within 10 games of like kind of what I need to see. So that's kind of my macro. I'd love to get into Q and A. Let's, let's rock and roll. Lou, um, if you can. Uh, you yep. want me to just ask you or put them on? Them on? You two got it. Go ahead, Dust. Um, William Zimmerman ask yo gary question do you believe in what hold on i want to put them on if you can okay, dust. Cool. can we do that yep so i want to get some people featured let me find them hey come here <laughs> i love what's going on in the chat and everybody obviously there'll be so much stuff here but like the chat i think could be more vibrant than even what i'm doing here so if you're trying to learn if you're trying to take pay attention to what's going on in the chat hey gary what's up man hey will what's good what's going on man uh, i've been following you for a while it's great Thank to talk you. Thanks, love man. You, What's man. up? Yeah, love Thank you. Two, two questions. Uh, I got a rising tide theory question, and then I have a uh, sophomore year card question. So if somebody's PSA 10 is skyrocketing, do you believe in buying the uh, PSA 9? Yes. Kind of like rising tide just raises all boats type of thing? Well, my, my biggest concern is that kids are going to get priced out or people that can't afford are going to get priced out. So I'm excited about the PSA 8 and 9 market. I even think the 8 market is interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. you've seen it, right? You've seen it. So yes, I absolutely believe that. I also think it hits cross-pollination. Vintage basketball has finally had its moment. I'm starting to really study vintage football because I'm like, wait a minute, if Walter Payton and, and, you know, and Oscar Robinson were kind of comped, but now Oscar's gone up 7X, but Walter stayed in the pocket, is that yep. an arbitrage? So yes, I think the rising tide matters. I think it goes to cross-brand. Uh, We've seen Prism, Lucas go bananas, and then all of a sudden you start seeing the hoops or the yep. optic go, but so I think, yes, I think there's a lot of that in this. And I think 
for vintage specifically, eights, sevens, sixes, fives, it's hard to get excited about a PSA five modern. I don't think anybody here is going to get excited, but I do think eights is still an interesting play and raw. We've seen raw, forget about even grading. So yes, I think I fully believe in rising tons. One more question. And then uh, sophomore year cards, if, if rookie cards are getting way too expensive, uh, for example, uh, not, this guy? Not for, not for, not for me, okay. but, but guess what? I'm point oh 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 one percent of the hobby okay. and the market. Not for me. I've never been interested in year two cards. Gotcha. You know, my brother's getting excited about champion first championship year card yeah. for basketball AJ? players. Yeah. yeah, AJ's like yeah. hot on that. Doesn't doesn't go crazy for me, but it's All an right. interesting theory. Um, it, h- it, historically, first year cards get too expensive. <sighs> I think if first year cards get too expensive, if you're looking from investment standpoint, you look at alternative first year cards, right? I saw Rylan show a Wade Topps card. I, I started buying a ton of Bazooka LeBrons. Oh, yeah, when, nice. You know, when it was like yeah, getting crazy. Nice. Like, so yeah. I'm just not hot on year two cards, but guess what? In five years, maybe that's the fucking jam. And uh, you know, that's cool, but not, not for me. Okay, cool. Thank All you very much, man. You got it, bro. Go ahead, Dustin. Yep. Henry. Mac, I like that Jackie Robinson. Oh, shit. Come on. Henry Taylor Gill. Henry Taylor Gill. Come on down. All right. I'm trying to. <laughs> Henry, what's good? Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Cool. Ken, where are you from? Oh, this is crazy, man. I've always wanted to talk to you. This is surreal right now. But. Um, my question is to do with like vintage and I know you're big into vintage. I'm big into vintage vintage and I bought a George Jevin off your recommendation. Um, but my question is like going forward, I know you're big on nostalgia and I know you're big on nostalgia for brands. My question is what happens when you have like someone like Bob McAdoo? Because I, w- I was looking at your uh, Twitter polls. You've been doing like who's the greatest ex or who's the greatest quarterback. Who's, who's better yeah. amongst yeah. these? I never say, by the way, yeah. on the record, because I yeah. enjoy what I'm doing on Twitter. Everybody gets yeah. mad at me. They're like, what about this guy? I'm like, no, no, no. compare these four. Yeah. I'm not saying these are the four yeah, yeah, best, yeah. but go ahead. Yeah. Um, but I've noticed like the trend with that is it's a hundred percent recency bias. Like you can Correct. basically rank Correct. them. In every the- single, every yeah. single time it's a younger crew on Twitter. And so the more current great always outperforms others within the context. I, I, um, which is why I never like live and die based on those polls. To be frank, this is good for all of you to know, I'm really not doing those polls for data for me to buy cards. I'm doing them because I'm so in the fucking card cocoon right now that I just like start asking these own questions for me and I'm just curious what other people think too. So, you know, Twitter's data is too dirty for that to be an indicator of me to do something business wise. But it's just kind of literally when I'm studying population reports on SGC, BGS and PSA, watching old videos or looking for angles on things that I'm trying to figure out, it's literally spur of the moment that I get excited about a poll like that and I just put it out for fun. So. Listen, I think the thing that, you know, I did a podcast yesterday and the kids were deep in the game and were very cynical of when I first came into it and they got a real lesson in how deep I'm in this shit right now. Like I do a lot of homework. Mm. I'm doing a lot of studying. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, my, the, the essence of my question is basically in like 20 years time, does anyone remember who McAdoo is or does anyone remember who well, some guy from the 70s was who maybe wasn't? They don't rem- Henry, you'll appreciate this now. They don't remember yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. Which is why they were underpriced. Yeah, exactly. But that's a, should I, would they be worth buying then on that basis or? No, nobody alive right now watched, you know, yeah. Hank yeah. Greenberg play, but ba- yeah. see, baseball did all the work for us. You can do a ton of homework on what's happened with the baseball card market yeah. over the last 90 years. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Next yeah. year is the NBA's 75th anniversary. Yeah. They're going to put out the 75 best players of all time, just like they did on the 50th anniversary that's going to start creating all sorts of lists and all sorts of debates. All of a sudden, Artis Gilmore and Bob McAdoo and George, they start getting a little fame out of that Bob Lanier and you start getting a little action. Right. And and that's what we'll see. I mean, that ESPN list is, is gospel for me, that top 74 players. (laughs) Like I look at that list all the time and I analyze it. I also think that we saw with the last dance, the ability for documentaries to bring a lot of interest once Last Dance dominated in Hollywood right now, there's a billion 
basketball documentaries in the making. And all of a sudden, Connie Hawkins and Oscar Robinson and Will Chamberlain, like, you know, this is, that's what happens. History plus now you live in a Spotify, Quibi world. So you don't need to make a feature film on Jackie Robinson. You can make a, for example, I'm talking to Dominique Wilkins right now to do a four part podcast series, you know, mm -hmm. maybe about him, maybe about his favorite players. So like, you're going to see a lot of content come out that's going to educate the kids. Plus it's fun. It's fun to look back at shit. And I think more and more people are going to do it. And people are going to look for angles. Not only that, when money starts happening for real, older money people start coming. You're about to see a huge influx of 45, 62, 71, 59 year old businessmen and women coming into the hobby. And they do know who Bob Lanier and McAdoo are. And when they look that fucking, fucking Kendrick Nunn PSA 10s are more expensive than Bob McAdoo, they're gonna buy Bob McAdoo's. Yeah, that's my point. That's kind of my, that's what I'm thinking. Cheers. Awesome, cheers. Bye. Let's keep it moving. I appreciate everybody being here. I'm scrolling through all these screens, seeing all the handsome and beautiful faces. I appreciate all of you. I'm glad you're all here. And by the way, take advantage of this moment. There's a lot of people in here that are going to be, I, oh, I like that, Abel. I like that Gary Vee signed card in there. I see you sharing that on the screen. Um, uh, please, 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 please share your Twitter handles right now in the chat, everybody, especially if they're linked URLs. This is an incredible opportunity for a lot of you to get to know each other and build friends. Like literally I expect at the national in Chicago, two of you coming up to my table and be like, we met on that fucking Saturday zoom. So like, yes, we're here yapping, but like, please, I see, I love this watching what's going on with the, and by the way, notice how some people are URLing it and some are adding it, do the URL. Cause it's easier for people to just click them and fucking start following each other. Cause obviously we're all on that same wave in here. Let's keep it going. Dust. Next will be Corey Donovan. Corey, get in here. Hey, what's good, Gary? Hey, Corey. This is Corey, a.k.a. Yamwax on uh, social. Hey, man, I'm looking at this, uh, this boom in cards going straight into the football season right now. And with fantasy football and all of that and the new investors, are we going to see skill positions like wide receivers, tight ends, running backs start to pop week to week or even, you know, ongoing? Yep. We sure are. Yeah. So for any of the newbies in here, the thing I was told three years ago by some of the OGs that I was coming in, I'm learning, learning, learning. They're like, Gary, the hobby doesn't like anybody in football besides quarterbacks. And I was like, okay. But my biggest thing, Corey, three years ago was the hobby is going to get redefined. Because if there's 50,000 people in it now, this is what I was thinking back then, but there's going to be 5 million in it, that 50,000 is a very small percentage. So what rules are going to be redefined? Right. And so I think you're going to see an explosion of fantasy and gamblers coming into sports cards this year. And I think receivers, I know Lou, I'm looking at little Lou on here. I know he's gone focused on receivers. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a big believer that football is next vintage football is my focus, but I do think that, you know, I'm not buying AJ greens or Julio Joneses or even younger yeah. guys like Amari Cooper. But do I think there's real, real, real money to be made? In like a short-term arbitrage, I do. Mm -hmm. And I think that in a long-term arbitrage, they have to be caught. I think where everybody gets caught is some, if you're betting on new kids, eventually somebody's sitting with the bag. Because to really be worth something, they have to be right. a top 50 player of all time. So like, that, like I learned this in my teenage years around Todd Van Poppel. Mm -hmm. I, I bought 4,000 David Justice rookie cards when older guys, like a very small group back then was saying, no, buy Ernie Banks, buy Clemente. And I'm like, fuck you, old guy. And that's who I am now. The yeah. action for all these kids is in the new guys. And right. so like- Yo, Gary, you go into a card shop. I recommend anybody do it. Flip through like early 90s sports cards and early 2000s to see guys like Clinton Portis. They're totally forgotten. So you, you're right. You do have that's to know right. the absolute stars. That's right. Think back to all the guys who crushed- Seven. By the way, look, basketball is at the height and look at what a Ray Allen or Chris Bosh mm -hmm. is doing. Nothing. Yeah. And like mm -hmm. those are real Criminal. guys. And if this was happening during the Heat's run, mm -hmm. Chris Bosh rookies would be through the roof. You're going to get a lot of people going to get right. caught with a lot of modern. But yes, I do think yeah. in the short term, but football scares the fuck out of me because you were perfectly right about Amari Cooper and he breaks his fucking leg in mm -hmm. week one. And I then mean, that caught. could happen to... That can happen to Patty Mahomes or Lamar Jackson too, though. So, you know, it's a tough game. I, Football I, is tough. I agree. Football is tough. Football is mm -hmm. tough. But cool, man. Awesome. Love it. Thank you, brother. Talk to you. Yep. Later. Uh, up next will be Adam Robles. Hey, Gary. Adam, how are you, bro? 
Good. How are you? Super well, man. Awesome. So I want to ask you a question. I'm a, I'm from Toronto. I'm a huge Raptor fan. Um, we have a stacked team and we have a bunch of young guys, but I feel like they don't get a lot of press. I agree. They play uh, for the Raptors and they play in Canada. Yep. You think it's worth it investing in guys like Pascal, OG. I'm obsessed with OG. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As a, I believe in his game. Mm-hmm. I'm scared that all prism rookies are expensive. Yeah. Like I, like I sat and watched OG highlights for like four hours. It's not true. <laughs> 45 minutes, but it felt like six years. Yeah. And then I went to eBay. I'm like, I'm going to steal this fucking kid. And they were already expensive. Yeah. You know, so it's like a little hard, but yeah, no, listen, if somebody's great, they're great. And don't forget bad for you, but, but good for the card investment. Mm-hmm. If you know, 80% of those guys are going to leave on the max contract. Yeah. Okay. You know, I don't want that for you as a Raptors yeah. fan. I mean, I hate the Raptors cause I'm a Knicks fan, but like for <laughs> you, that sucks. But you know, those eight, I would argue that six out of 10 of those guys are going to go to a big market on their map. Yeah, you guys are low. I mean, Terrence Davis, Siakam, OG, like those guys are, it's like, I think you might win the title this year. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I mean, if, I mean, fuck it. If Kawhi let, stayed, forget it. You would have moonwalked. Yeah. Um, I yeah, agree. so I, yeah, I don't think, I, yes, it hurts a little, mm-hmm. but, but good is good and it always works out. Got it. Okay. Pitts, oh, cool. Pittsburgh's a small market, but yeah. like, you know, but like, if you're good, you're good. Yeah. Okay. No, that's good to know. Thank you. I mean, bro, nobody even knew where Golden State was 15 years ago. <laughs> I, I was literally being San Francisco in tech. All those nerds didn't care about sports. I'd be like, what about the Warriors? They're like, what's that? I'm like, Golden State. They're like, where's that? While I was in San Francisco. Right. So like, if you're good, good works every time. Okay. All right. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. You got it. All right. Cheers. Up next will be John Evans. Hey, Gary. What's good, John? What's going on, brother? Oh, well. Thanks so much for doing this, man. Yeah, Um, fun. I'm really interested in stuff that's on, you know, you mentioned doing some recent research around things that you think are untapped or undervalued. I'm curious if there's anything you'd want to share here that you found. I know as I've been trying to kind of, leave no stone unturned i've looked especially at the starting lineup sets i love um, them i'm a fan yeah, me too. I've been buy- I've been- i only own probably about 50 or 60 but i've been buying starting lineup cards I've-, I've been buying starting lineups figures to rip the card out yeah that's what i've been doing as well yeah. that one's especially interesting just because it's got really low pop in the in the pop report but then also a lot of the starting lineup collectors kept them in the packaging so even if everything else is they're also they're also good looking cards especially the early stuff right Um, yeah i'm a i'm a buyer i lou might be laughing right now because i bought a a stack of raw starting lineups at the national last year i came back i was all fired up he was excited he thought i brought back something good and then he like made fun of me but like i really i i like them i i listen i believe over next half decade anything that has low pop and ever had cultural relevance has uh-huh. a chance. Has a chance. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. I, I felt like a mad scientist as I'll I buy you, those I'll, and then I'll, try to I'll, cut them out of the packaging. And I think you're onto something. I also okay. like. I also and I really love branded cards. Right. You know, I, I think I I just really like the icy bear seventy two set. I've been on the record on that. I see you holding one up right now. I'm obsessed with that set. Sugar Daddy. 74s of little ones, you know, 68 Jack in the Box, San Diego Clipper cards. That weird shit really has my attention because yeah. I think it's extremely rare and all you need is a little bit of demand and it gets mm-hmm. berserko. So I, last question along those lines, with the sort of more obscure sets like the Icy Bear, do you think along the lines of your art, uh, yes. cards imitating art thesis, when you have cards like this that are jumbo and bigger, I'm thinking, so if, if this replaces art and people hang this up in their I don't think office, they're gonna. I don't think they're going to hang it up, but I do think you're going to see some display cases built that people can like hang up their 25 best ones. So like, I think the five by seven stuff, like the inner Lake Jordan and all that stuff, like you may see some stuff happen, but I don't think you take, I do think bigger cards and smaller cards, again, Rules of the old hobby, I think, go away. So I don't think size matters in any shape or form going forward. I really don't. That's kind of what I've been wondering because you have, like, these little small stickers, like the 1986 Dr. J. 
Yep. But these are the small Spanish stickers. And then you have like these jumbo cards. And I'm wondering if one or the other is going to be better than just your regular. One man's point of view, it could be totally wrong. I think it plays out that neither size matters. Okay. But I think All a right. lot of people in the hobby have thought standard cards only. And that's where there's an arbitrage. Awesome. Thank you so much, man, for what you're doing for the hobby. Very cool. Thank you, John. Um, we're just getting a lot of questions about like how to start. So I don't know if you want to just make like a nice yeah. statement well, for them. Yeah, Lou, May, there's a lot of starters in here. Can you link like 50 times in a row in my chat that URL that you guys made on my blog that has all the links that we think is this 10 hour starter kit to get all the rules down? Thank you. For all the really, really noobs, which, you know, I was just three and a half years ago, but I had like decade of experience, but you needed to get refreshed on all the new rules. We'll put a bunch of things here and please feel free to share it out and things of that nature. And, and Lou, because you're so sharp on this shit, why don't, since Dustin's picking questions, why don't you read the chat pretty aggressively, Lou, and then maybe jump in with some questions in between quick fire questions that seem to be common or, you know. He's, he's pretty much doing that and then he's okay, just sending, awesome. sending me names. Awesome. So Lou, feel free to jump in occasionally and just, if you see something that's interesting, to you just ask the question on behalf. Go ahead, Dustin. Uh, Liam Wasserman. Liam. What's up, Gary? What's good, bro? Uh, I had two questions. So what do you think, like, why do you think base cards are beginning to outsell certain autographs? Uh, cost of entry. There's okay. so many more people into this now, but there's, but at first, they, I mean, it's expensive shit, Liam. And not right. everybody, a lot of people are collecting, not just flipping. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to buy a silver for 6,000 bucks you know, right. or, or a one of one or a Kaboom 10 or, so I think bait, whenever the, the hobby's very popular, when there's a lot of demand, base will mm -hmm. always do better. What you grew up with, it sounds like by you asking that question, which is you were in it before this boom. Yeah, I was, I've been in yeah. it for about seven or eight years. Perfect. The demand was much lower. Right. So, so that demand group didn't want the bases because there was a lot of supply. They went after the one of 100, the one of one, got it. So yeah. as demand grows, the base grows with it. And then I also had another question about like, how do you feel like celebrities in the game? So like you, Steve Aoki, Mark Wahlberg are all big accounts that are starting to put out sports cards. How do you think that's going to affect the market? Oh, I think that's what the next wave is. I think, you know, Wahlberg's on a different level and Aoki's on a different level than me for that matter mm -hmm. too. Like I've always said this the last year, you've probably heard it. I'm like, you guys think I'm fucking, wait till you see what's going to happen. I mean, I think right. we're moments away from the coolest people doing it. Top mm -hmm. 10 rappers, top 10 athletes, and then it's going to be fucking game over. Game yeah, because I've match. seen like you on your podcast, like telling, who was it? Like Serge Ibaka to invest in cards. Again, and... Serge is like, he hit me up the other day. Serge, by the way, to the gentleman, uh, I don't see him, uh, to the Toronto kid. Serge told me about Terrence Davis. That's why I started really looking at him. Um, Again, Serge is a great, solid NBA player, but I'm like talking like Dwayne Wade and the baby and Gunna mm -hmm. and T.I. and Tyga and fucking, you know, like, like real fame. Yeah, but then, you, that, but then you have to think like maybe cards might start, be, start to get too expensive for people like me. I'm, I'm 18. I'm not going to be able to afford all this while I'm in college. Of course, but two things will happen. One, since you've been in seven years, that's going to escalate so much that you're going to have more capital if you right. deplete it if you're not just holding two it will adjust and you'll look at nines and eights or like mm -hmm. me me and others are looking for starting lineups or like like the you grew up and most of the people i talked to that have been in it for 10 years or more mm -hmm. grew up in an era where it was tiny mm -hmm. so it was concentrated yeah psa 10 you know limited cards right yeah what you're about to watch happen is the complete expansion of something that is going to make 59 things important, not just mm -hmm. one. Because I know personally, I've been all modern, but I'm starting to look into vintage. So like my PC, I'm a, I'm a Cleveland fan. I go to Ohio State. So like I'm looking into a 58 Tops Jim Brown that I want to buy. An yeah, bro, and by the Jordan. way, bro, do me a favor. Buy a 58 Jim Brown immediately. Mm -hmm. Because that one's about to get bananas, bananas. Yeah, there's, I'm, I'm looking into a couple of low grade just because that's what I can afford. But I respect that. I, I would tell you one of the ways that a lot of smart kids are going to win is they're going to buy and sell very hot things like a Tatum or a Mitchell or a Michael Porter Jr. Take right. profits and go into more scarce vintage. That's where mm -hmm. I see kids really amassing true wealth in this era. 
Mm, yeah, because I want to look into vintage as more of a long-term hold while I'm in my four years of college just to keep Liam, but, I, but I think up. everybody's starting to learn. Everyone's like, Gary, vintage doesn't go up as fast. Da, da, da. And they were all telling me that. They're like, Gary, the new stuff goes so fast. Da, da. I'm like, cool, you don't understand. The second vintage demand rises, there's no fucking inventory. Right. I was buying PSA fucking eight Dr. J's a year ago for 700 bucks. Now they're fucking five, six thousand, seven, eight, right. nine thousand. Right. And I saw, I saw John Snyder who's driving, put up thumbs up. So, you know, I'm taking that as a contextual guy who's been in it for a while or understands his point of his head. Like either he sees it or he's lived it. Listen, I lived this already. It was called 1986 to 1994. Mm -hmm. What did I do? The same mistake I'm trying to tell a lot of kids not to make, which is I got excited about everything that was happening of the moment. Now, you should still do that. That's why people gamble. That's why people watch sports. I get it. But if you're really trying to build, like, I want to buy a house with this one day. I want to start a career. Like, it is about supply and demand. And the vintage mm -hmm. stuff is such an important place to look at. Yeah. By the way, back to Ohio State, Braxton Miller hit me up uh, really? a week ago and said I want to get in. So I'm talking mm -hmm. to him. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on campus right now. I'm a first year, so. Enjoy. All right, Thank let's keep you. it moving. I haven't looked G into blockchain. I saw the blockchain question over and over. I haven't really looked at blockchain. I, like, my blockchain is very simple. Like, I believe in blockchain technology. In 2015, I bought some Bitcoin after a, a funny debate night on, at South by Southwest. I did extremely well, but I have not been active in it. Right now, I actually see the physical nature of the cards acting like contemporary art. But, I'm, but blockchain is a technology that will all be affected by through the years and there'll be plenty of opportunity. It's just not where I'm putting my energy right now. Uh, gee, a lot of people are asking about uh, like soccer, vintage soccer. Obsessed. Um, yeah, I think- I'll make, it, I'll make it very simple. Obsessed, period. I think one of the, for me even- this And by the way, question. back to clarity. Lou, you know this as well as I do. What do I have? 25 cards? I have very little inventory. Um, yeah, but I think something that I would want to he hear about is like when it comes to, I think a lot of people are looking for, when it comes to modern stuff, people are looking for Prism, they're looking for Topps Chrome because that's the stuff they know. When you get into vintage, when you get into vintage soccer, especially, it's like the most random shit ever. Hand cut, of like, out of magazines. Yeah, and like what is the Europe. brand called? Like no one knows what the actual card is. So I, I think all of it is in play. The grading companies did it for you, you know, and, and I'm seeing Josh and share one of his cards on screen. Like, you, and Lou, you know, you know what's fun, Lou? Is you've been with me, and guys, Lou, who's on the screen right now, or just was talking, you know, he's my admin, but I've known him since he was six. We're Jet fans together. His dad and I are great friends. Like, three years ago, when I was like, yo, we're doing this, he kind of laughed about it, but he was into it and helped me. Lou, you know this. I was about the weird stuff from the beginning. The hand cut, the 52 Wheaties were the first things I was buying. You were laughing, 52 you know? Wheaties, like the most random shit I've ever seen in my life. Right. So like, <laughs> like, I'm not scared by any of the random 50s, 60s, 70s soccer stuff. All of it is interesting to me. I, as you know, Lou, I'm, the one thing I haven't gone into is the postcards. I'm a little, that's the, literally the only thing I haven't bought. But like all of it, I think has to be, Lou, here's why. And everybody's watching. And bottle uh, caps. Yes, I did, build, I did bid on an actual soda bottle cap on eBay and everybody made fun of me the other day. Um, uh, I think the hobby will evolve its point of view on things, I, but if it's graded and that means kind of official, I think all of it is in play to be debated of. Pele's got like seven different cards that are debated as the rookie card. Ali, all this stuff. Like I think all of it's going to be debated. Jerry P, I'm going to make sure that card's worth a lot of money for you one day. Um, yeah, so... So I think soccer is, there's a lot to learn. You know, I've started by educating me, myself on who the 50 greatest players are since I didn't grow up really being hardcore, doing a lot of homework. It's the global sport. Basketball is emerging as the new and next global sport, which is why I'm so bullish on it. Obviously, I understand it a lot better. The World Cup is going to be super exciting. You know, you also have a potential generational talent if he stays healthy with Mbappe happening at the same time. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on on soccer. Um, soccer and Pokemon are very important to all of this conversation because they are gateway drugs to people that don't like the big four sports in America. And so I'm watching a lot of people get into a lot of things because um, Pokemon and soccer are getting them in. 
and then that gets them. John, I love your emotions. Uh, I guess you're agreeing with me, John Slater. Um, I think Pokemon and soccer are getting people that would have never considered cards back in the day in, and then they're bleeding into football and basketball and other things the same way. I mean, I'm watching basketball only kids get into Juan Soto and, and, and Fernando Tatis Jr. It just ha- I'm going to say it one more time. I am very good at pattern recognition. It is why I've predicted so many things right. It's why I'm successful along with some other dynamics, but it is one of my great skills. I've seen these patterns before. I lived them in 1985 and 86. And it's just happening again. But it's happening with the internet. It's happening with YouTube pack breaking. It's happening on the back of the 86 to 93 era where I became obsessed, but now I have money. So there's like, and so do 5,000, 50,000, 500,000 others. So you're getting a different wave because when it happened in 86 to 93, the parents of that era, they weren't the generation that was in love with cards when they were kids. So they were like, what? They were like kind of, eh. what you're seeing is kids dragging parents in, parents dragging kids in. It's a bigger dynamic this time. It is. Uh, up next is Colum. Colum. Do- Do- I- yep. Sorry, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> hey, Gary, pleasure to be on. Nice to have you on, Colum. So uh, my question had to do with, so I've been preaching to my friends, saying, you know what, get on this, get on this, it's early. And uh, like kind of everyone I've talked to says that, again, I know you're into super into vintage and stuff, and I've kind of been focused on modern right now and moving that money into vintage, but everyone I've talked to thinks that it's like gambling, like you're betting on players to win. And I see a lot of people making quick money like that. I just wondering what your thoughts are on. It is gambling. Yeah. So you would say straight gambling too. I wouldn't say it's straight gambling because the reason I started yelling three years ago and the people that jumped on, I knew the whole thing was going to go up. So it was almost like everything's gone. Like if you're losing money in cards right now, turn off the computer and never go into business again. Yeah. Like, like, like. That's what happens when it explodes. Now we're starting to enter the next phase where it is more, I mean, you see what people are paying for national treasure RPAs of kids that have, that 90% of those kids are not gonna make it. Yeah. Now, if they flip it quickly, it's day trading versus buying Apple stock for five years. Yeah. I'm playing this the way I play the stock market. I buy seven, 12 things and I sit on it forever. Okay. I'm not day trading. 90% yeah. of this room right now and the Twitter and social are day trading and that's fine. I don't get to judge how one plays it, but that is gambling. Now, I think when you do it with Devin Booker and Acuna versus Michael Porter Jr. and fucking Jason Dominguez, it's a different level of gambling. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right? So so I think when you're betting on 16-year-old prospects in Bowman, you are completely rolling your fucking dice. I think when you watch a season like Acuna last year and the fucking pedigree – you're not gambling as much. Now you're in Derrick Rose gambling territory, which means, sure. which means everything could be right and we're all right about Acuna and Kurt D's point of his Braves hat, he's fired up, but, yeah. but Acuna could become Bo Jackson, get hurt and not happen. Yeah, I yeah. lived through Bo Jackson. I lived through Penny Hardaway. I lived through Grant Hill. I lived through that. Yeah. You know what's fun about vintage? Jerry West is always going to be the logo. Jerry West is always going to be a 12-time OG, Jerry West is always going to be the guy that fucking traded Vladi Divac for, for fucking Kobe Bryant. Jerry West is always going to be one of the iconic old white guys that could play. Jerry yeah. West is going nowhere. Yeah, long term, you can't go wrong. You can go unbelievably wrong with every single – I mean, do you know how much money potentially is going to be lost on Zion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, now, I don't know. Now, no, Zion no. could go on to be, you know, fucking LeBron, and, but, but the potential – I promise you this, between Zion, John Morant, Jason Dominguez, like there's some real money going to be lost in this era. Maybe not by the people that are sitting now because they're flipping it, but somebody's going to be sitting with the bag. Yeah, just straight collection of Zion. And I, and I don't want to be sitting with a bag. I'm buying things forever. Okay. And, 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 and that's it. Yeah. I yeah, know. Well, thank you very much. You got it, brother. Uh, up next is Tommy Hayes. Zion could be Sean Kemp. That's a great example. Do you understand if this was the NBA final season with Sean, of the Sonics versus the fucking Bulls, how expensive Gary Payton and Sean Kemp rookie cards would be right now? Like, kids are not thinking. Now, they're day trading, which is okay. I, I'm telling you, 
my, I haven't figured out the piece of content yet, but at some point I'm definitely gonna put out, hey kids, be a great day trader, take 30, 50% off the rack and put it into something that's long-term and just keep playing that game. I think that could be, because then they've got something for themselves one day. It's also why I love Pokemon. Pikachu's not gonna tear his ACL. Let's keep it going. Um, I, I just unmuted someone, but I right, forgot so who was. Just give some shout outs. Antonio Rez R, what's good? Eric Rodriguez. Tommy Hayes. Ryan Shaughnessy, what's oh, good, man? What's up? Go ahead. We hey, Gary. This is uh, Tommy. Tommy, what's good? Uh, I had a question about I've seen a big trend on uh, vintage basketball, football, baseball reprints, and then people going getting them PSA'd and then putting a Walter Payton rookie for $1,300 out there that's a reprint. Education, education, education. Yeah. It's no, I'm just saying, do you see these people like, you know, just keep on doing it or, you know, I just hope not. Buyers, it's just, yeah. My hope, Tommy, is that somebody here in this room that doesn't know how they want to enter this industry decides to start a Twitter account or a social media account that lists everybody who's trying to trick people with qualifiers and reprints and becomes one of the five biggest accounts in the whole sports card hobby because everybody references it and it stops people from being fuck faces. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a, by the way, for anybody who's kind of clever or wants to do something a little different, I think that would be a monster account. But Tommy, that, Tommy that's why I tell everybody a hundred hours of education before you buy your first eBay. Meanwhile, the second, the second they get hot on it, they buy 16 things on eBay and buy a fucking PSA 8 qualifier and get ripped off. They buy a reprint and get ripped off. They buy a, they buy a bullshit grading company, B, you know, BCCG. Yeah. And like people make fucking mistakes. It pisses no, yeah. me off. I see these clown bags out here doing this and I'm just like, you're going to push away too many people from the industry and piss too many people off. The good news is, if I feel like the reason I'm being loud around education is I'm hoping the next people that have big audiences pick up on that. And hopefully that will be a big, and we all got to keep pushing that. And, and, you know, I can't control trimming and things of that nature. Like that gets hard. That's like FBI shit, but like the common stuff of like, you know, reprints or fucking, or, or the qualifiers really trick people heavy, Tommy. Yeah. The PSA sub qualifiers, people are getting ripped off heavy. Oh yeah. Thanks man. Thank keep you. Brother. Thank you, man. Um, a lot of people asking about the future of UFC trading cards. I'm I, I don't know. Uh, some of you may know Vayner Sports is now in the UFC game. We're repping some pretty legit dudes. We got a main event tonight, um, and uh, and I'm literally starting my process of UFC homework this weekend. I think. Um, so, I believe in UFC. I think UFC is a really good spot. I haven't done any homework. Have no clue on population. Um, only starting to get my education. I'm bigger. I was a historically bigger boxing fan than I was UFC, but have always dabbled. But now that we're in the business, I'm heavy deep. And so I'll have a lot more to say in the next year. But if you know UFC, um, it's definitely somewhere to look at because boxing cards, golfing cards, tennis cards, like when, and again, I'm looking at a lot of faces in here, even some of us older cats in here, we're going to see another entire cycle. This is gonna be this era, and what is it gonna be? 12 months, 49 months, 62 months? I'm not fucking Nostradamus. I have no clue how long this happens, but what I can tell you is it's gonna happen. It's already happened, like I said it would. We're in it. It's gonna have a run, and then whatever it is, the global economy, something else, just general fatigue of everybody being hot on it together for five years, and it gets boring like every other thing in life, and then there'll be a dip. And then again, seven, 12, 19, Years later, they'll come right back. This has been 120 years in the making. So that's why I want you sitting on Jordans and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and LeBrons and Dr. J's and Walter Payton's, not Mike, Michael Porter Jr. And Michael Porter might turn out to be, but like the gambling is so high on modern. Jackson. Hey, Jack Gary. Hello. That's good, Jackson. Hey, so I had a question about um, what you think is better investment for baseball, either prospect cards or the rookie cards. Like I have this Bowman Acuna um, prospect yeah. card. I didn't know if you'd rather if, have. If, like, if, if, yeah, 
it felt like for a long time, Bowman was winning the day. The hobby had Bowman, but we've seen a major surge on Topps first appearance in series two or update. And I, I, think, I, I think it will continue to evolve, Jackson. I think you play the arbitrages. It might end up being heritage in seven years. And that was the right arm. So I think, I think you hedge, you don't pot commit to anything. It was very clear that it was Bowman three years ago to me when I did my backlog homework. Tops has closed the gap quite a bit in the last 18 months, but I think both of them are quite sound. The problem is, right, like you look at Eloy Jimenez, who's having a great year right now, right? What hurts Bowman a little bit is that he's in his Cubs uniform and he's a White Sox, and you think about those kind of dynamics a little bit. A lot of these minor league guys switch a roo versus when they hit as a rookie and are awesome, they lock in for quite a while on that team. So there's a little bit of that, right? I think one of the reasons – you know, Moses Malone, for example, is underrated is because he played for like nine different teams. But had he played in one place for one time, right? I, I think about like those things. I always think about Wade Boggs, probably underpriced because he became a Yankee. And so like Boston fans can't go there, right? Maybe even Mookie Betts for that reason, though I think he has two great fan bases that are less direct rivals. So these are all the things that run through my fucking head. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'd also say on the Topps Bowman thing, G, like Tatis is an example of a guy who popped off this year. Like his Bowman, hey. Go ahead. His, his Bowman is still, you know, $800 and his top series two is only like 260. Yep. So like the Bowman still does carry a pretty big premium for a lot of guys. I think so. But I think we've seen Topps close the gap. I agree with you. And you've I, seen I'm, with- I'm on the side of, I think Topps is better, but that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, yeah, I think, I think they'll evolve. I, you know, I think that, um, I think it's going to be interesting to watch a ball that I, I, I do think tops will continue to close the gap intuitively. I think so. I also think it's a price point. That's a little more affordable to the youngsters. I also think tops and, you know, Lou, when we did that set with them, I yelled at them. I'm like, make your regular product. Good. They finally did this year with like some parallels and some autos. Otherwise it was boring as shit. Jerry? I, think we, I think we can block the sexo sexo anal. <laughs> okay. I think, he's not, I think he's not looking to bring value. Not a lot of sports card questions. Yeah, I don't think sexo sex. I don't know if that's like, you know, I don't know if I like penis. I like penis is like some hot, <laughs> some hot pitcher in, you know, Dominican Republican right now. But I'm gonna I'm gonna lean towards Brian Daniels not bringing value. <laughs> All right, let's keep it going. By the way, biggest ROI, biggest reason I jumped in here is if you're following me and wanted to be in here and you're about this subject matter, there's a substantially strong situation that you want to be, um, that you can be friends with each other. So after this is done, please go to Twitter and use the hashtag, that was fun GV, that was fun GV. This way you can all find each other and maybe get into combos, follow, make some trades, buy from each other, whatever you'd like to do. So. Let's get, let's get that hashtag in there. That was fun, GV. Let's get a couple more in here real quick. Jerry? Hey. 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 Can you hear me? I can. All right. Great. So um, I had a question. I, I've got like $2,000 into the sports cards, and I'd like to say I've got some pretty big stuff. I've got like a Zion Silver 10 here. Um, I've got a load of Mbappes. I mean, I was buying them when nice you said job. to buy them. I got them at 52 bucks a piece. I still had to pay 20 bucks to get them graded. But at what point do you cash out? And what I mean by that is, do I, do I sell one card to get all the money back and have a little safety so it's all free money? Or yes. Okay. Yes. That's always a good um, idea. Now, the problem is, you know, you may sell something that gets you all your money back at 3,000 bucks and then watch it go to 11,000 and be like, what the fuck? So the only time to cash out is at the moment that was the right time to cash out. And nobody can tell you that. Okay, well, so I'm a Dave Ramsey nut. Uh, I literally just used the stimulus money that I got because I was like, well, it's free money, you know, might as well go for it. Uh, you know, how do you, how do you decide what to, sit, to sell out? Because I've got like five Mbappes. You know, Jerry, I got this one that I'm keeping forever because, you, you know, <laughs> you're, you're just the real OG, like, literally. Jerry, you're part of a new grade of people that, you know, what, what's really wild about the people that came in through my funnel 
is the stuff that I pushed, Giannis, Luca, Mbappe went so crazy <laughs> that a lot of people made a lot of, while the hobby was like, trying to figure out if I was full of shit or bad or good. The, my audience ended up doing extremely well on those bets, LeBron Chrome. And so, you know, you've got to decide, is this something you loved? Is this something interesting to you? Is this something that you are learning about? Or was it something that you believed in me? You decide, you believed in, you know, turning your stimulus into something and now you're sitting here. You might be the kind of guy that should just sell right now. And that's amazing. You made a lot of money, but if you're seeing like, wait a minute, I like Pokemon, I like sports, or I like something, and I want to learn more. It depends on how much more you want to get educated. Your answer to Mbappe, brother, is doing homework on Mbappe. Understanding that he may go to the Premier League, and what? Understanding that the World Cup's in Qatar in the winter of 20, like, education is how you make these decisions. I have a huge advantage that I live the life I live now, where I actually DM with Juan Soto and Fernando Tatis, and like, get to know these kids, and then decide, are they a knucklehead or are they trying to work at all times to become great? And then that helps me make decisions. It's all data and information. Well, honestly, so the whole reason why I honestly got into the sports cards was to learn how to build a YouTube page. And I would really like to come work for you or Dave Ramsey as a content creator. This right here is my favorite card. This was what the only it? credit. It was a credit card that I had. I cut it in half to do the Dave Ramsey I stuff. I love that. Debt Good free. I was going to send it off to PSA, but I really appreciate your time. <laughs> I don't know if they'll grade it, uh, but Jerry, you're on the right path. So keep making content. By the way, you were probably the perfect guy to get deeply educated and make, and make the social media account that Tommy and, and I were just talking about, which is the one that you need probably 200 hours of education. So you don't, so you have a good account, but it's posting like auctions that are trying to trick people. Like who knows? Maybe that's your yeah. thing. Uh, well, I was going to say one way to tell everybody the safest way to get into sports cards. I've just been going out to Walmarts and using free capital that I had. They put out 600 bucks worth of mosaic. I tripled my money in 10 days on eBay. And I mean, that's, and you by know, the way, it's that's, insane. And that flip has spurred a lot of emotion in the hobby because they're mad about the people that are buying everything. And that's on Walmart to try to figure out if they have to start limiting. And this is all human and economic dynamics. Everybody has to figure out what works for them. People, you know, people say that's not right. And I'm like, look, I struggled to tell another man how to feed their family, right? If it's not illegal, yeah. it's very hard to tell, you know, like everybody, people are in control. Panini's in control of their business. Walmart and Target are in control of their business. Everybody here is in control of their business. So there's a million ways to get educated and there's a million ways to play it. But I think good, honest kindness and real education and trying to do it the right way. There's so many ways to win in this and it's enormously fun and it makes watching sports fun and for, you know, look at me, I'm 95% vintage. I love sports, but I just think there's so much, I get so much fun in doing research and figuring out that there was a cookie company that made a 1954 Hank Aaron card. And I think that's weird and cool. And because I think it's gonna go more art on the super high end, I think some of these cards that are $4,000 that are weird that nobody wants could end up being $3 million. I'm not kidding. Yeah, so yeah. There's a I million mean, ways know. to play. Or you want to do Patrick Mahomes because you think he's going to win four of the next five Super Bowls. Mazel tov, do you. Well, hey, man, I really appreciate you so Happy much, Gary. It, like, you are the best, man. I've, I've read your books, listened to you daily, man. Thank Just you, keep up the good work. Thank you, you so much, friend. man. Thank you so much. Sneak one or two more in here. Uh, Cody Caro. Hey, Gary. Hey, what's good? What's up? So, funny story. Um, you actually, <laughs> you and Lou – actually bought a plane ticket for me to come to the national I unfortunately got got canceled i remember but uh hopefully we'll be able to meet soon so i got a question about card breaks by the way that's the other thing that i really love about this hobby right like like i think you know i've tried to bring a ton of kindness to it you know again i'm not confused and a lot of you are in it and i know what people think about me or did think about me but like there's so many you know like like Buying, buying somebody a plane ticket to come to the national is like the karma that I love living on. And it's like really fun. And I think for a lot of you, if you're doing really well and you made a lot of money, like helping a kid get into it or stopping somebody from making mistakes, maybe instead of posting all your flexes of sports cards every day, posting an article that teaches somebody how not to buy a qualifier. Like, like there's a lot of ways to give back. Yeah, of course. Go ahead, my friend. I, so my question is about card breaks. They're getting more and more popular now and it seems like almost everybody wants to get into it yeah it's fun 
yeah, of course. That's why I got into it myself. Um, so I've been doing it since February. I've been trying to grow a community around it, not just for them to, you know, join my breaks, but just around the hobby in general. How can I kind of like stand out as a new card breaker? That's going to be sub completely based on your skills. Okay. This was the question everybody asked me on Twitter and YouTube in 2006 because I was blowing up. They're like, how do I stand out? And my answer was be good. <laughs> and being good comes in a million forms. You're attractive. That's good. That works. You're funny. That works. You're deeply educational. You're entertaining. You, you came up with a random idea that was different than anybody else had ever done it that way. It's all the same shit, brother. Well, yeah, I've, yeah. Um, I've actually tried but to- in the uh, beginning, in the beginning, let me, give you, let me give everybody a good piece of advice if you want a card break. Make your first 15 episodes totally different to see what's resonating and what fits good for you. Don't pick your format. Try 10 different formats in the first 10 episodes. Oh yeah, that makes complete sense. When I started out, I tried out a bunch of different types of card breaks. I tried like, a, somebody gave me an idea for a blind auction card break. I was like, sure, let me try it. Like I haven't seen anybody do it, let me just try it. Um, but I've also been trying to like give back since like I've learned a bunch of stuff and you know, it's really tough to become a card breaker. I've actually started creating a guide. I have a discord where people could come in, they could host their own card breaks to try it out, to see if they like it. They could ask questions, just all that sort of stuff. I, I even got it. Pokemon breaking. I love it. <laughs> Keep going, brother. Keep going. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Take care. Take care. Let's go. Hello. Hey, Lou. Hello. Lou, can you get a rapid fire? Maybe four or five of the questions that you thought popped. Yep, it's getting ready right now. And who's up, Dustin? Uh, Diana. I Hi, figured Diana. we should change it up a little. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Gary. I've read all your books. I'm a huge fan. This is so amazing. Hi from the Thank Philippines. Um, I'm a mother, and I'm from, I'm 39, so I'm old. And um, so my boyfriend has a bunch of Jordans. So I'm very happy about that. But I'm also interested in Pokemon because ever since Dustin showed that big, big ass stuff toy, and also because, yes, he can't tear his um, ACL. And I have two boys. I have a six and seven year old. And I want to do it as a family thing Love. and Love. investment long term as well. And the Love. whole contemporary art angle also has me really intrigued. So I want it not only for fun, but investment for our family. This is fun and a hobby and a family event that can make you money. Yes, Going on a family, exactly. getting into skiing costs money. Becoming a yes. Disney family costs money. Exactly. Like, this is crazy that way. I, I think you're on it, and I think Pokemon is as safe as it gets, but you have to get okay. uncomfortably educated. Okay, I can like, do that. 100 I'm hours of watching video and reading, 100. Oh, I'm used to uncomfortable. <laughs> Good. But I think you're on it, and I think it's going to be great. And aside from your guide, which I will get into, um, your guide is sharing the link. Is there anything else that, um, in terms of Pokemon, so I could really focus Ready? on it? Ready for this, Diana? Get off right yeah. now, go on Twitter. That was fun, GV. We're going to all do that okay. hashtag. It's going to be my last thing I say here before we leave. That was fun, okay. GV. And, uh, uh, and you could just say, anybody help me with Pokemon? There's probably six, seven, eight people here that can really help. Oh, perfect. I love it. Thank you so much, Jerry. You're welcome. See you soon. Thank I'll you. be on to you with Gary V soon. I promise. I'm going to bug you guys for it. I, I can't wait. <laughs> Bye. Lou? Bye. Lou? Yep. Um, so someone asked about uh, thicker cards, so like National Treasures, Noir. What do you think yep. about those as opposed to the base stuff? I, again, I don't think size matters. I'm obsessively scared of Noir because they're black and they can't grade well. So I think they're just an incredibly difficult thing to collect. Um, but if you love collecting raw and you're not worried about grading, then they're amazing. So it just, it comes out to how you see it. Do you think 61 Fleer is too expensive right now? I think 61 Fleer basketball is grossly underpriced right now, even though it's gone up five to 10 X. Um, someone was talking about vintage QBs. They said their uncle was Danny Testaverde and they're wondering about investing in vintage QBs. I think vintage QBs are wildly underpriced. I, Lamar I versus I, Mahomes prison base. Lamar versus Mahomes. I think Mahomes will have a better career but anybody can get hurt at any time. Um, and then thoughts on soccer. We talked about it a little bit. Basketball, we talked about it a little bit. It's Everybody come in with your things. question that you want to ask right now. We'll do a whole rapid thing, and Lou will just keep reading his favorite ones. So ask your Lagging question. Lagging severely over here. No oh, worries. I'm trying. Um, bum, bum, bum. 
Uh, listen to Card Talk. I'm gonna I'm gonna plug Card Talk real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Card Talk Pod. Uh, 1:37 p.m. Talk about cards every week. Myself, Tyler Schmidt from Team Gary V, um, and Ryan Johnson, Card Collector Two. We'd have like interviews every week. We've done Pokemon. We've done vintage stuff. We're gonna have Gary on soon, and me and him are just gonna argue about vintage cards for like an hour straight. It's gonna be great. I see Garbage Bell about. Kids in the chat. I haven't gone into it yet. The window of Garbage Bill Kids was like an 18 month phenomenon. And I don't think that was long enough of a phenomenon for it to be like a crazy thing. But I can see it tripling during this era because we still have millions of people that are potentially coming into this hobby or, or investment thing. So I think everything, even right now, has real potential. But I don't think that's the most potential. And on the downturn, I think a Pikachu Red Cheeks PSA 10 is better than an Atom Bomb PSA 10. What do you think about grading from uh, like the inevitability of digitized grading and like I can't, AI for grading? I, I can't wait. I can't wait for the machine to be invented. I, I'm trying to get Elon Musk to invent it and just make it. And then this way, all the debating and scare goes away. But that would make things vulnerable because if you have a PSA 10 at $40,000 and it comes back a new machine nine, people are going to be fucked up. But that's, there's risk in everything. I have a little spinning wheel here. So I don't know if Tustin, if you had seen newer stuff, um, but I can't. What do you think about the current LeBron James and Kevin Durant PSA 9 rookies? LeBron James and Kevin Durant. Yeah, I think, I think both. <laughs> I, I think Kevin Durant has the potential to be the most interesting of them all because I think people quickly forgot that he was really the best basketball player in the world right when the day he got hurt. And so I think um, the, any place in New York. I, I think Kevin Durant is extremely interesting. High risk, some – excuse me – high upside, some risk, depending on how, but his game, the way he plays is not reliant on his injury. And so I just think, and I think he's very chip on shoulder. I'm, I'm very bullish on Durant. Lou, you know this, I bought maybe more Durant than anything. I'm very bullish on him. And I think PSA nine is an incredibly interesting category as things get expensive. I even think PSA eight for the not ultra modern, but the modern call it the 2006, 2010 back is even an interesting debate. Someone asked about, damn, I can't find it now. But. SGC over PSA. You know, it's interesting, Andrew, you probably know, I'm very fond of SGC. I think they're extremely difficult on grading. I know there's that one viral post where a, a 10 SGC got a six PSA, but like you see that all the time in every direction. Like I think SGC is tough grading. I like the black case personally. I know that's completely a subjective opinion. Everybody likes different cases. I think there's three companies. I think there's PSA, BGS, and SGC. And I, I, I submit a lot, probably more than the norm to SGC. And, and I get mad about it because I get back bad grades. <laughs> but I just like their cases. Uh, sports, card depends, sports cards depends on the player's skills. But what, do you, what about Pokemon? What, are their, what makes them, I guess, favorite than someone else? the community of Pokemon people getting excited about characters or new original programming, kind of like Star Wars. If Pokemon starts doing content on Netflix around Squirtle, just on a six part series on that, that's gonna build up demand. And so um, future behavior with the IP is gonna change the outcome. Just like in the comic book world, nobody gave a fuck about Black Panther. And then all of a sudden they know movies coming and everybody does. Same thing with Pokemon over the next 30 years. Things will pop up, whether it's toys, whether it's cards, whether it's a video game, whether it's a movie, whether it's a mini series on Spotify that will feature a specific Pokemon, and that might change the market dramatically. All right, I gotta go. I hope everybody enjoyed. Uh, hope this brought you some value. Hope everybody's super well. Thank you for being a part of this. Uh, to continue this incredible community, please go to Twitter right now. Hashtag, that was fun, GV. That was fun, GV. Use that hashtag. Um, let me just put it in here so everybody, there's no mistaking it. Hashtag, that was fun, GV. There you go. Um, and I hope everybody's well. Good luck. See ya. Hey, everybody on YouTube. First of all, thank you so much. So humbled for your time. I don't wear a watch, but time is the biggest asset. So thank you for watching that video. If uh, if you got some value out of that, there's uh, plenty more where that came from. Feel free to check it out.